Amen, amen, amen. God bless each and every one of you. Tell somebody, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. We want to welcome you to another edition of I Am The Church Ministries Church School, brought to you by I Am The Church Ministries. And man, I am excited and elated about the lesson on today. This is Sister Catherine Wright Smith. I am Pastor Brian, and I must greet you by saying I must work the works of him who has sent me while it is day. For when nighttime comes, can no man work. We're just here to give our two fish five loaves of bread on this Sunday school lesson. Amen, amen, amen. We thank and praise God for each and every one of you. Thank you for joining us here. I am the Church Ministries. If you have not already, we encourage you to go ahead, like, share, and also subscribe to our YouTube channel at I Am The Church Ministries. Amen. Just press that subscribe button and that little noti notification bell. Here I Am The Church Ministry. Tell somebody that's the church Sunday school bell. Amen. 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 We thank and praise God for each and every one of you. Amen. If you have not already, amen. Again, go ahead and subscribe to I Am The Church Ministries. Amen. When you subscribe to us, amen, you will always be notified that we are live, amen. And so we want to say amen. We want to say good morning to Sister Karki. <laughs> I'm just playing Sister Karki. Good evening, Sister Karki, amen. Good evening, Sister Galloway. And then also Sister Perry, good evening. And then God bless each and every one of you that's joining us through our many various platforms. Uh, YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, and also our website at www.iamthechurchministries.org. Amen. We just thank and praise God for each and every one of you. We're just acknowledging who woke us up this morning. We know how wonderful his name is. Amen. And so we're just so honored and privileged to be sharing with you. Sister Catherine Rice Smith, if you don't mind, can you please open us up with a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for letting us be assembled again together. Bless this lesson. Bless the people that will teach this lesson. Let this lesson um, just gear towards somebody to get closer to you. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we do pray. Amen. 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 And then also, my brothers and my sisters, you know uh, that we are in the cheering section for all the rest of those that will go forth and teach this lesson throughout the course of this week. And also, um, um, also on Sunday, amen. Uh, for those that will go and teach this lesson on Sunday, for those students that will come into contact with this lesson, amen. We're playing, we're praying for the teachers in the students. Amen. Amen. And so we thank and praise God for that. Amen. Let's go ahead. Now I got, I got to be real. Amen. We are in a new unit. Amen. And the new unit that we are in, my brothers and my sisters, the new unit is entitled Faithful to Heal. All right. So the last court, uh, the last unit that we were in, uh, we studied uh faithful to prophecy. All right. This unit, we're gonna study uh the thing faithful to heal. All right. And so here we go. Let's go ahead. Sunday, July 31st, 2022. The title of our lesson is God Heals a Centurion's Servant. Amen. Sister Catherine uh, wrote that, y'all. I mean, I would have spaced it. Amen. That was Catherine. Yeah. <laughs> Time of action is 28 AD. Ain't no domino. It's the translation in the year of our Lord. And I know many people probably ask, why do you always have to reiterate that with AD? Many people just think AD stands for after death, and it does not. And so I, I figured the more I say it, the more we'll know it. Place of action is Capernaum. Uh, Luke, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 7, uh, verses 1 through 10 is where our lesson text comes from. Our golden text reads as follow. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed, turning to the crowd that was following him. He said, I tell you, I haven't seen faith like this in all 
Israel. And I go to Texas coming from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 7, verse 9. Amen. Uh, we have two outlines, my brothers and my sisters. Amen. We got two outlines. Amen. Uh, first outline is entitled The Evidence of Goodness, coming from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 7, verses 1 through 5. And then our second outline is Evidence of Faith. Coming from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 7, verses 6 through 10. All right. And so, my brothers and my sisters, uh, before we uh, dive into the lessons, uh, Sister Catherine and Wright Smith, could you give us some background, some context? What was happening before we arrived in chapter 7? Okay. So, a little bit of background. One, um, Jesus had did some healing before, you know, we got here. So, the, he healed the crippled man. He uh, called the 12 uh, apostles and the Sermon on the Mountain. And so now we're here where he's about to heal the centurion. All right now. All right now. So now Jesus got an impressive dossier. Amen. 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 Tell somebody dossier in the French means resume. Amen. <laughs> Resume. He has healed folk. Amen. He has preached messages. Amen. Uh, we call that famous uh, message uh, in our context today, the Sermon on the Mount. All right. And so uh, after uh, all this preaching and teaching, he's preaching and teaching in the synagogues. You know, he's had encounters with the Pharisees and Sadducees. Hey, man, Pharisees asking question, who is this man that can forgive sin after he healed the paralyzed man? Uh, he told Peter, get back in the boat and launch out in the deep after Peter had been fishing all night long. And so after all of that. There's a Jesus got a good following. Um, and so Jesus have did so much uh, as far as ministry is concerned, preaching, teaching, miracles, all of that. All right. We know Jesus did miracles because that's what the Jews were accustomed to seeing from God. So we got that. So now we're at today's lesson. All right. So I first outline my brothers and my sisters, the evidence of goodness, Luke chapter 7, verses 1 through 5. And it reads, Amen. I got to be able to see it. Here we go. And it reads as follows When Jesus had finished saying all this to the people, he returned to Capernaum. Now, Sister Catherine Wright Smith just told us, Amen. If you go back to chapter 6, Amen. He was dealing with the Beatitudes, he was dealing with salt and light, he was dealing with seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all of his righteousness, Amen. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, Amen. He just got done with all of that. So, when verse 1 comes in, when Jesus had finished saying all this, to the people, he returned to Capernaum. Now, Capernaum is uh, 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 is right where the heart of where Jesus' ministry is in Galilee. It's about the north shore of Galilee. All right. Verse two says, at that time, the highly valued slave of a Roman officer, the centurion, was sick and near death. Here go the situation. Amen. When the officer heard about Jesus, he sent some respected Jewish elders to ask him to come and heal his slave. So they earnestly begged Jesus to help the man. If anyone deserves your help, he does. They said, for he loves the Jewish people and even built a synagogue for us. Sister Catherine Wright Smith, what's going on in this section? So right now, uh, the he Jesus was upon the multitude and some Jewish uh, Roman officers came up to Jesus and explained to him how this servant boy was sick near death and that if anybody needed to be healed, it should be him. All right. Yes, yes, yes. We see here in this section. Amen. This centurion. Amen. High class. He's Roman officer. Now I got to point out. Amen. Let me ask this in the comment section. Amen. Was this Roman officer a Jew or a Gentile? Let me see. 
Let me see it in the comments. Because, see, I know we have some teachers and we have some scholars in the comment section. Amen. Was this Roman officer a Gentile or a Jew? Or was he a Jew or a Gentile? Amen. One thing we do know is he was not Afro-American. Amen. So don't answer that. Amen. That's wrong. Amen. 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 Here we go. He was a Gentile. Let's go, Sister Galloway. Or should I say Professor Galloway? Amen. He was a Gentile. Let's point that out. We need that. This Roman officer is a Gentile. Amen. So since he is a Gentile, amen, his uh, officer, his servant, high value slave of a Roman officer, that's what he was, King, uh, I believe his new international version might have said servant. All right. Um, but as we look inside of the text, we see that his servant, his slave, was sick and near death. Now, according to the gospel of Matthew, Matthew said that this uh, uh, servant, this slave was suffering from palsy and palsy in the biblical times meant he was paralyzed. So when this officer heard about Jesus, he sent. now, wait a minute, stop right there where the comma is. When the officer heard about Jesus, how did he hear about Jesus? The text does not give us that, but we can assume that he heard about the paralyzed man that Jesus healed. He heard, amen, about the uh, Sermon on the Mount. He seen some, or he heard about some of the miraculous miracles that Jesus performed. Amen. He heard about Jesus. He sent some respected Jewish elders to ask him to come and heal a slave. Now, I got to ask this question here. The comment section, amen. Why would the officer, the centurion, it does not say his name, amen. But why would he send respected Jewish elders to ask Jesus to come and heal his servant or his slave? Let me see in the comment section. Amen. Let me see. Let me see. Why would he send respected Jewish elders to ask him to come heal his servant? And amen. Why couldn't he just go himself? Why he, why why didn't he just go and 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 talk to Jesus himself? Amen. Let me see. Amen. Why would you go and, and send some respected Jewish elders? First of all, he's a Gentile. I want to point that out. That's all I'm saying. Hey, Amen. He's a Gentile. He sends, he heard about Jesus, and he sends some respected Jewish elders to ask him to come and heal his servant. Why didn't he go to Jesus himself? Let me see. According to this, we have 10 people on. Amen. If you have not already, man, amen. We encourage you to go ahead and subscribe. Uh, hit that heart button. Hit that like button if you don't mind. Amen. 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 God bless you, Dean Clark. Amen. Why? Jesus was a... Go ahead, Sister Galloway. Go ahead now. Go ahead now. Amen. The nurse had to give her water. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Now, I know Sister Galloway ain't the only scholar we got in the comment section. Amen. Jesus was a Jew. Uh-oh. All right. So he sends this centurion, a Roman soldier who happens to be a Gentile. Gentile are not God's people in here. Oh, you're in the car right now. Okay, all right. Amen, 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 amen. She said the nurse didn't have to give her a towel or a peppermint. Amen, amen. Listen, okay, all right. So, a Gentile sends respected Jewish elders. Now, y'all got to look at the text. Respected Jewish elders to ask Jesus to come heal him because Sister Galloway says he is a Jew. Now, if we understand the Gentiles and the Jews, who did Jesus come back for? Here we go. See, when you when, when we study the lesson, it's a whole lot that we have to pull out. Who did Jesus come back for? 
Amen. Who did he come for? We read it all in the Old Testament what this Messiah is supposed to do. Amen. What was his reason? What people was he coming for? Because it's important to understand, because if we can understand that point, we can understand why this centurion uh, uh, officer sent respected. Amen. Go ahead, Sister Perry. Jews, go ahead now. He sent some respected Jewish elders to ask him. Can I give it to y'all? Amen. Says we got 13. If you have not already, have not already, go ahead, uh, like, share, comment. Amen. I will show you a comment on the screen if it's pertaining to the lesson. Amen. Gentiles. Amen. So let me help you. Sister Perry answered it correctly. Jesus came back for the Jews. Come on. Let's speak Bible. Man, think about it. He when he amen amen Dean is in there Jews first that's right he came back for the Jews first here we go God's chosen people was who amen tell somebody that comment section gonna work tonight amen God's chosen people was who who was God's chosen people amen. Who was God's chosen people? This is very important. Who was God's chosen people? Jesus came back for the Jews. Who was his chosen people? Amen. We're going to walk this all the way down. Amen. His chosen people were the Jews. Yes. Go ahead. I know y'all tired of typing Jews in the comment section. Exactly. So let's look at some of this thinking. This respected, high-ranked Roman officer has a sick slave. The officer, amen, God bless you. Yes. This officer, chosen one, Jews, yes. Go ahead, y'all. I told you, got scholars, amen. We got deans, principals, and all of that in the comment section. All right. This is the beginning of the Gentiles being evangelized. Yes. All right. Let me leave that comment up. That was too fast. This is the beginning of the Gentiles being evangelized. Let's look at this. Yes. Go ahead, Sister Perry. Y'all teaching good today. When the officer heard about Jesus, heard about the miracles, we would think that he heard about all the miraculous things. He heard the sermons. Amen. He might have uh, caught the laugh of the Sermon on the Mount and all of that. He sent respected Jewish elders. Why? Because he was a Gentile. And so Jews and Gentiles, they ain't have no dealings with each other. Remember when Jesus sent out the uh, disciples first, he didn't send them to Gentiles. He sent them to Jews. Tell somebody we in the book. This is very important. So now the thinking behind verse three would be because he understood that he was a Gentile. He figured I send some respected Jewish elders to him to come and heal his slave because now. It's a better chance that I send these respected Jewish elders than I go my own self because I know I'm a Gentile and this man is a Jew. So the respected elders, uh, verse four, respected elders beg Jesus to help the man. If anyone deserves your help, he does, they said, for he loves Jewish people and even built us a synagogue go ahead now I, I could tell that was some of us amen 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 hook him up amen 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 man he bought the church a new podium gave us this is a parking lot amen can, can y'all just amen can y'all just imagine how we would be amen 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 he amen he he, he, he built us a new pulpit all of that amen amen he hooked us up if anybody deserves it we know he's he's not a jew he's a gentile but look at all the great things that he does right let's let's look at the other side of this all right now, just like these Jewish elders went on behalf of this Gentile, what do you think the people of God can do for those they may not know or they do know, may not be in the following? What do you think us as believers can do for those that may not be in the ark of safety? Tell somebody in the session, come on, talk to me, somebody. Amen. 
If anyone deserves your help, he does. Look at what he's done for us. This man had a heart like King Darius. Amen. Remember, King Darius was the one that told them, continue to go ahead and build that center, uh, continue to build. Amen. This man got a heart. But he loves the Jewish people and even built a synagogue for us. This Roman officer did this for us Jews. So if anybody deserves it, man, Jesus, come on, man, do it for him. Now watch this. The respected elders, and man, listen to the centurion soldier and went on behalf of the centurion soldier. Guess what we can do? intercession we can intercede for other people amen amen sister cat you got anything you want to add no nah, you're teaching good Pastor. okay so we see here a amen and you summarize this section amen but it's important that uh for those that will teach this lesson to pull some of these things out all right he's a gentile and this Gentile has did some marvelous. Uh oh, here we go. This Gentile, he reminds you of a man, a man, uh, 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 the prostitute in the Old Testament. Amen. Amen. I can't think of her name right now. Amen. The centurion was a Roman soldier who was a man of great faith. Yes. But it's amazing that this man that was a Gentile, he had great faith. We're going to get there in a second, Sister Perry. He reminds you of the uh, prostitute. Amen. Remember the prostitute who hid the spies? Amen. She told him, I heard about uh, how y'all God, amen, bought the children of Israel out of Egypt. We see time and time again how those that were not a part of the family, the Jewish family, amen, they were able to be blessed because they had a belief in Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to find out her name. It's going to bother me. Rahab, Rahab, there you go. It just came to me. Amen. Rahab. Amen. We see some parallels. Then also you see a parallel between this section and also in the uh in the uh book of Acts, the technical part of when the New Testament actually started, but we're not gonna go there. Amen. In the book of Acts, Cornelius, amen. All right, here we go. Our next outline is Evidence of faith. All right. Evidence of faith. So the word reads, so Jesus went with them. But just before they arrived at the house, now Jesus goes with them. Jesus heard what they had to say. So Jesus went with them. Let me just read it. But just before they arrived. Thank you, Sister Galloway. Rahab. There you go. I was saying Ahab, and I'm like, that ain't right. That's a guy. I know that ain't right. It was Rahab. Amen. But just before they arrived at the house, the officer sent some friends to say, Lord, don't trouble yourself by coming to my home, for I am not worthy of such an honor. I am not even worthy to come and meet you. Just say the word from where you are. And my servant will be healed. I know this because I am under the authority of my superior officers and I have authority over my soldier. I only need to say go and they go or come and they come. And if I say to my slaves, do this, they do it. Sister Catherine, real quick, what's going on in this section? So basically he sent some other soldiers to come meet them and they were almost at the house and you know he's telling them that you know they're not worthy to you know for jesus to come because if we if we dive a little deeper uh it was unlawful for jews to go into gentiles houses okay. so uh you know they just like, if you speak the word from where you're standing, he's going to be healed. Amen. 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 So 
uh, thank you for pointing that out, how unlawful it was. Amen. Go back to the Old Testament. You will see all throughout how the Jews was not supposed to have any association, but they were supposed to be great witnesses to the whole entire world. All right. And so thank you for pointing that. That's very important. All right. So that's that's one uh, thought that uh, because he knew he was a Gentile, Jews wouldn't normally come to the house and all of that. But then also, let's just think about the controversy of having Jesus come into your house. Amen. Amen. Can we just think about that? Because you got Pharisees that's going back and forth with him. You got Sadducees that's going back and forth with him. Sadducees are, are going back and forth about resurrection and uh, uh, reincarnation. You got the Pharisees questioning uh, Jesus' authority and all of that. Amen. And the controversy that would have uh, taken place if Jesus would have showed up to this Roman soldier, a Gentile's house. That's another thought. All right. Another thought is, can we see the humility in the text? Here goes the humility. He's the officer sent some friends to say, Lord, don't trouble yourself by coming to my home. Jesus is en route to go to this man home. Now, for, look at the humility in the text. He says, I am not worthy of such an honor. Now, I got to point this out. We see humility in this text that this Gentile who was not a part of the household of faith, which is the Jews at this time in the text, he recognized that he was not worthy of a such an honor. This high-ranking, this top-of-the-line Roman soldier officer recognized he was not worthy of such an honor. He says, I'm not even worthy to come meet you. Just say the word from where you are, and my servant will be healed. I'm not worthy to be even in your presence. I am a Gentile. And I know I'm not clean. And I'm not worthy to be in your presence, Jesus. And he says, just say the word from where you are and my servant will be healed. Now, do you see? First of all, we see we see the humility. We see the honor. We see the reverence. Amen. And tell somebody when we go to God. Amen. Just because he has saved us. Amen. We still need that same formula. We need to go humble. We need that same reverence. We can't just act like he just any old anything. Amen. Amen. We should have that honor and respect for him. But watch this. He says, right where you are, just say the word from where you are and my servants will be healed. Now, I know he got a VHS from the Sermon on the Mount. Amen. My daddy used to uh, listen to preachers uh, back in the day. He used to have tapes. Amen. And, and Jasper, uh, the Reverend uh, uh, Jasper Williams, one of the preachers that he would listen to. Amen. Uh, uh, those were the cassette tapes. Amen. Used to listen to that in the car. Amen. He had a red lumina. Amen. He says, just say the word from where you are and my servant will be healed. Can I help somebody? Can I just bring it to today? Amen. Amen. I know most of us love in person in the sanctuary worship. Amen. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Do your thing. Amen. There's nothing wrong with that. But he said instead, amen. Can I just put it in? Can I just say it the way uh, Pastor Brian can say it? Amen. Can I put it in our language and our dialect and our dialogue? Amen. 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 I don't, I, I won't be at the end person but can you do it online amen now i could i could see some of y'all now amen now i want jesus to come to my house i didn't heard he didn't stop everywhere else he could stop everywhere else he could come to the house amen i i, I know I, I hear some of y'all amen man but right where you are just say the word can can we can we deal with that this man not only does he have the reverence, does he have uh, the honor for Jesus, but then also he recognized the power of Jesus. 
Just say the word and my servant will be healed. And I wonder, do we have that same belief that he has that power that he don't even have to step foot? He can be where he is and yet he can be effective in my situation right now. You don't have to show up. Just speak the word. And then he goes on in verse eight. He says, I know this because I am under the authority of my superior officers and I have uh, authority over my soldier. I only need to say go and they'll go or come and they'll come. And if I say to my slaves, do this, they do it. Not only that, he recognizes the power, but he recognized the authority that Jesus Christ has. Very powerful. Stop right there. I'm not worthy. Humility. Just speak the word. Recognizes the power. Recognizes his authority. You have this type of authority. Thank you, Sister Perry. You better teach. He had exceptional faith. How do we know he had exceptional faith? Sister Perry read verse 9 and verse 10. Verse 9 says, when Jesus heard this, he was amazed. L let's stop right there. Amen. When the last time you amazed Jesus? Hmm? I was dressed one Sunday. I was looking sharp. Okay. Did that amaze Jesus? I ain't missed not one service. Amen. Amen. I tend everything. Did that, that, did that amaze Jesus? After Jesus heard what this man had to say, he heard it and he was amazed. This is our golden text. Turning to the crowd that was following him, he said, this Jesus, I tell you, I haven't seen faith like this in all Israel. Here we go. Go ahead, Sister Robinson. The centurion knew that Jesus had that kind of power and authority over sickness and disease. And he can heal this servant even from a distance. Yes. I told you we got scholars in the comment section. He knew he had that power and authority. How did he know that? He heard. He might have seen Jesus perform. Man, speak the word. I know you got the authority like that. Yes, yeah, Sister Robinson, go ahead. He could heal his servant even from a distance. But turning to the crowd that was following him, he says, I tell you, I haven't seen faith like this in all of Israel. Number one, Jesus came back for Israel. And, and, and folk in Israel had ears to hear. <laughs> but yet, they kept missing it. See, because some in Israel just saw him as another man. Can I help somebody here today? They just saw him as another man. No, wait a minute. This man recognizes. So you see a profession of faith in these verses. And what moves Jesus and what makes him amazed is he has to turn to the crowd and tells the crowd, I haven't seen faith like this in all Israel. Hold up, Jesus. Wait a minute. In the convention, you ain't seen none of that. In the gathering in the synagogue, because he was teaching at the synagogues. Remember, he ain't seen faith like that. Folk that was faithfully going and all of that. And he ain't seen faith among Israel, God's chosen people, the one who has the history and know about God's blessing. You mean to tell me, Jesus? He haven't seen faith like this in Israel. And then guess what, my brothers and my sisters? He is a Gentile. And Jesus is saying, I haven't seen faith like this in all of Israel. And when the officer's friends returned to, the to his house, they found the slave completely healed. 
So Jesus was able to uh, uh, offer this man's request because of what this man bought. The man didn't come empty handed. He didn't just speak name and claim. No, he believed it. And so many of us, we fall in the traps of just speaking and naming it and claiming it, but we don't actually believe what we speak in and naming and claiming. And yet he couldn't find faith like this in Israel, the people that he was sent to. And I wonder, this is just the question. Would Jesus say that today pertaining to the church? He said, I haven't found faith like this in Israel. Could he find faith like that within the body of Christ? Just the question. Could he? Could he find it? And look at what happens in verse 10. They go back and this man is made whole. Jesus didn't show up to the doorstep. But Jesus was able to honor this man. Why? Because this man had faith. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence not seen. Amen. Amen. I would ask this question all the time that you have faith. Does that mean God is going to grant whatever you have faith in? First of all, we have faith in him. Come on. God didn't get rid of the fire for the uh, three Hebrew boys. And they said before they got in the fire, even if he doesn't do it, we know that he's able. Amen. Amen. That's it. All right. Amen. That's the lesson, y'all. Amen. We thank and praise God for each and every one of you. Amen. That is our two fish, five loaves of bread. Amen. Y'all see that. Amen. Amen. We thank and praise God for each and every one of you. Thank you for joining us here. I am the church ministries. Amen. If you have not already, we encourage you to go ahead and download the IATCM mobile app. And that's available on the app store and Google Play. Amen. You want to download that app. Amen. If you have not already, we encourage you to go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel at I Am The Church Ministries. And we thank God for each and every one of you. Amen. Amen. If God can do it for this centurion soldier, what do you think he can do for you? Because I declare that if it happens in the scriptures, if it happens in the text, it can happen in your life. Amen. Amen. I've seen him do it. And guess what? You have too. Praise God. So we thank and praise God for you again. If you have not already, go ahead and subscribe to I Am The Church Ministries YouTube channel. Amen. Amen. Listen, if you have not had the opportunity, listen, you want to go and listen to this message, seeing God. Amen. Amen. We are able to ex uh, extrapolate from the text of how we can see God in 2022. And so I'm going to do a part two to this message uh, Sunday coming up. And so if you have not already you can go on our YouTube channel, you go on Facebook or you go on Twitch and you can find this message. Amen. Join us tomorrow for after the message. Amen. After the message is the time where I can teach uh, the backgrounds to each of these sermons. Amen. We hear clips. We discuss. We're able to disciple each other. Amen. And so this is the opportunity. So tomorrow we're going to talk about 2022 fiery furnace. I mean, you really want to go check that out. I provided the links uh, uh, in the live uh, description section. Hey, Amen. It's significant. You want to uh, look that up. Hey, Amen. How significant your role is. Hey, Amen. In the kingdom and then seeing God. Part one. All right. I might even talk about part two because there's going to be a part two message. Hey, Amen. Hey, Amen. Let me see. Anything else that I'm missing? And also join us on Sundays for our one click to worship. Amen. On Sundays at 930 a.m. and also 1230 p.m. Amen. Also, you can look us up on our website at www.iamthechurchministries.org. You can click the link in the uh, description section. Amen. Again, we thank and praise God for each and every one of you. Amen. We thank and praise God for your faithfulness. We are forever grateful and praying for the teachers that will teach this lesson. 
amen, across the world, amen. We just thank and praise God for this lesson, amen. We pray that this can help you in your study, amen. We thank and praise God for you, Sister Catherine Wright Smith, amen. We thank God for all of our teachers in the comment section, amen. Amen. Shall we pray? Gracious Father, we come to you right now just to say thank you. Lord, we thank you for all of the great things that you have done for us. Lord, we pray that we can have the faith, that same faith. Let our faith grow in such a way that we can exude that same faith as this Gentile officer. Lord, we ask and we pray, Lord, that you will bless the teachers that will go on and teach not only this lesson, but the other Sunday school lessons. We pray for all of those teachers in Sunday schools that are going forth. We pray for all of the different uh, ministries that are going forth. Lord, we ask and we pray, Heavenly Father, that we be more bold in our witness in the work that we do. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that worketh within us. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we do pray. And the people of God said, amen, amen. God bless you. God keep you again. If you have not already subscribed and we will see you tomorrow at six o'clock for after the message. You do not want to miss it. We talk about the message. Amen. After we preach it, we go forth and we talk about it. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God keep you.